Joining me here on YouTube Sports today is Tim Dittman. How are you doing, Tim? Doing good, Kai. It's always uh, good to catch up with you. Uh, first off, let's start with the Big Ten. Uh, who do you see as the division champs? Well, it's really wide open as far as the West goes, with the exception of the team I cover. I hate to say it, which is Illinois. They don't uh, have a chance to win this year, but... Uh, you know, Northwestern won it last year, surprising a lot of people. I think uh, Wisconsin's expected to be good. They've always got good running backs. Nebraska's got a real talented young quarterback that I think they're hanging a lot of their hopes on. Uh, Purdue and Minnesota, I wouldn't expect them to be major players, although, you know, with new coaches, uh, when I say new, you know, they've been around for you know two, three years now. Uh, Jeff Brom, who you're familiar with at Purdue, Very. and then P.J. Fleck at Minnesota, who I think is a, a big up-and-comer, did some good things at Western Michigan. I think those two programs are on the rise, but uh, and then you can't count out Iowa as well uh, with Kirk Ferentz. He's been there forever. So I, I probably see the West as a three-team race between Nebraska, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Uh, in the East, uh, Penn State will be real good. Ohio State, obviously, is going to be good. Michigan's going to be good. Um, I think it'll probably come down to Ohio State and Michigan, and I have uh, real trouble picking against Ohio State, even though they're playing uh, in the post-Urban Meyer era. Uh, I just think they are the class of the Big Ten, and you know, even though they've had their off-the-field controversies, I just think they just... They churn out wins, and they churn out championships, and no matter who's been the head coach at Michigan... Uh, no one's uh, been able to have their number, so I would probably lean toward Ohio State in the East. That's kind of the way I was leaning too. Uh, well, who do you see as a sleeper team? Uh, going back to the West, I think Minnesota could be a sleeper again. I don't know a ton about their personnel, but I just really like uh, their head coach PJ Fleck. I think uh, sometimes you roll your eyes at him. You know, because maybe he's a little too enthusiastic for his own good, but uh, you can't deny that he good. He did good things at Western Michigan, and you can't deny that you know he's got people talking about Minnesota again. You know, Minnesota football for the longest time wasn't really uh, on anyone's radar, and now he's got Minnesota on the rise. Um, as far as the East goes, oh gosh, it's tough to pick. I mean, Michigan State. Uh, with Mark Antonio, he's always pretty good. Um, I really don't see Maryland, Rutgers, and Indiana doing a whole lot, so I guess I'd have to go with Michigan State as my sleeper in the East. To wrap it up, uh, what do you think about Illinois this year? Well, this is year four under Lovey Smith, with and the, beard. Um, the fans have, have gotten real restless here in Champaign. Uh, they, they want results, and they want them now. Um, Lovey Smith has been open about saying that, you know, this is the year the team expects to take a big jump. Now, whether that big jump means uh, getting a six wins and going to a bowl game is anyone's guess. Uh, I think unless the season is an absolute disaster, Lovey Smith's going to be back next year. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be a quarterback battle. Uh, we've got a uh, transfer from Michigan, Matt Robinson, who's uh, more of a, a pocket passer. And that is kind of at odds with what our offensive coordinator likes to do, but um, we'll see how that plays out. And then uh, we've got this this really highly touted freshman quarterback, Isaiah Williams. So I think it's going to be a two-person battle of quarterback between Williams and Robinson. I would probably give the nod to Robinson at this point because I don't think he transferred just to, to sit the bench for a year. Um, you know, other than that, the wide receivers are a question mark. We've got, uh, you know, Reggie Corbin, who is our all Big Ten caliber running back. He's going to he's gonna do good this year. Uh, we lost our center, Nick Allegretti, to the NFL, but we got a, a transfer from Alabama named uh, Richie Pettibone, who's probably going to fill his spot. So, you know, if he's coming from Alabama, he's got to be pretty good. Uh, we lost uh, one of our key defensive linemen, Bobby Roundtree, to injury. He actually... Uh, He's a defensive end for us, and he was in a swimming accident and had a real bad spinal injury. He had a, had a mishap in the offseason, so that was kind of a big blow both on the field and emotionally. So it uh, remains to be seen you know, how they're going to fill his slot. Uh, you know, But big picture, I think this team has the potential uh, to make it to a bowl. I mean, they've got a real 
soft non-conference schedule with Akron, uh, who's not that good, Connecticut, who barely fields a football program to begin with, and Eastern Michigan, and Illinois should be favored there. And then it's just a matter of finding three wins somewhere else, whether you can uh, maybe sneak one out over Purdue or Northwestern or Rutgers. Um, So I think this team has the potential to go to a bowl, but whether they play up to their potential is anyone's guess. Tim, thank you for doing the Big Ten preview. Always a pleasure, guys. Sky Ramsey for YouTube Sports.